Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today I want to talk to you about weapon damage models. Now, there's some people over on Simpthick.com in the forums that have been doing a lot of really interesting research on the Battlefield 4 damage model and comparing it to Battlefield 3. And there's some very, very interesting findings. One, that the damage model is pretty different from Battlefield 3. Now, that being said, when I was at E3, it felt like the damage was particularly low, and the devs have mentioned that the damage was turned down a bit for E3, and that the final game release is going to have a damage model very similar to, if not the same, as Battlefield 3. So it seems like we're probably going to have to wait till the beta to really confirm on what the damage model is going to be in the final game. However, uh, at E3, it appears that they are using a damage model very similar to the Bad Company 2 damage model. Now in Battlefield 3, most weapons that are carbines, assault rifles, uh, even some of your PDWs depending, um, would have a maximum damage of 25, making them a 4 shot kill in close range. Well, in Battlefield 4, it seems like most carbines and assault rifles seem to be doing a maximum of 20 damage, uh, with drop-offs down to 16.7 damage or 14.3 damage. I'm not going to say which ones specifically do what, but this is a very uh, similar damage model to Bad Company 2. Also some of the pistols, like the M9 in this, do 25 damage, so the pistols are actually doing more damage than the assault rifles, making them a 4 shot kill, but an assault rifle a 5 shot kill, making pistols a little bit more, I guess, useful in close quarter engagements, a little bit more powerful. Again, we'll have to see if this is the damage model in the end. A nice thing about the accuracy of the weapons is that it looks like it's pretty much staying on par with Battlefield 3. We've got a carbine here that has a .4 ADS accuracy. We've got an assault rifle that has a .2 ADS accuracy. That seems to be right on par with what the stats from Battlefield 3 are. The LMGs that were in the game seem to have a .4 ADS accuracy and because some of those LMGs were identical to the ones in Battlefield 3, uh, the ones in BF3 actually had a .5 ADS accuracy, so it seems like they might be tweaking the LMGs to be a little bit more accurate than they were before, which I think is a great change uh, in the right direction. Now here's something that's great news for snipers out there and potentially bad news for anybody who's fighting a sniper. Uh, the two sniper rifles in the game, the bolt action sniper rifles, were doing 100 damage maximum. And then, uh, depending on which one you're, you're using, they had drop-offs down to either 38 damage or 56 damage uh, at range. But that 100 damage maximum means that it seems like you are going to be able to kill your opponents with body shots, head shots, anything that's basically going to be doing 100% damage. Leg shots, as we know, uh, in the Battlefield 3 model do 0.9% damage, so if they keep that same model over there, you're not going to one-shot somebody if you hit them in the legs but it's still an incredibly high damage output for bolt action rifles. Um, here's something that I'm not sure if I'm reading the stats right on the forum, but it says the drop off starts at 25 feet out and ends at 120 feet out. It might be meters, but it seems like that would be a little bit crazy for a bolt action snake rifle to have 100 damage uh, all the way out to 25 meters. Who knows, maybe that is a good accurate way to do it, but that means 25 meters or closer you can one shot anybody with a bolt action in the head or chest, uh, which is really impressive. Now I'm sure the head multiplier is still going to be higher, so you'll still be able to one shot people in the head from any distance with most bolt actions but still to be able to one shot them in the chest it's going to be a huge change from battlefield 3 and definitely shift some of the power back into the recon's hands now in my opinion those are the most interesting weapon stats if you want to pour through all those weapon stats that are listed out there i'm going to leave the link to this forum in the video description down below you can check it out but what i'd like to move on to is weapon attachments now we've all sort of made our predictions about what different attachments are going to do to the guns well, we've actually got some stats here i wanted to talk about some of the cooler attachments that i'm uh, really looking forward to getting in battlefield 4. now the angled foregrip which is a very very cool weapon attachment that magpul makes which uh, is just basically what it sounds like an angled foregrip it's like a little triangle under the barrel of your gun allows you to hold the weapon in a different way which uh, is supposed to really help with recoil management when engaging uh, enemies on the battlefield uh, the way that DICE has applied the stats in game here with the angled foregrip uh, shows it reducing your first shot recoil by about um, 
a multiplier of 0.67. So that's going to really reduce the initial kick of your weapon, and I assume whatever gun you can put this on, it's going to make it a lot easier to control that initial recoil. Uh, and I have a feeling that this is going to be a very, very, very popular attachment for most people who want uh, precision assault rifles being able to control assault rifles well. It's just going to help you mitigate your recoil as best as possible. Can't wait to throw this thing onto like every gun in the game and test it out. Uh, as we all, if, if you're familiar with the Battlefield 3 stats, the first shot recoil is much higher than the follow-up shot. So it's usually a big kick and then you can kind of mitigate the recoil after that because you have less recoil after that initial shot. So this angled foregrip is going to help you reduce that initial shot recoil, meaning that it should just be very easy to keep your sights on target from the beginning once you start firing. Now the normal vertical foregrip in Battlefield 3 would reduce your recoil, basically, and they've changed it up for Battlefield 4 here. Now the vertical foregrip uh, reduces your moving aiming down sight spread and your moving hip fire spread. This is actually going to be a very good attachment as well. The multiplier is 0.5, which means that while you're moving, your hip fire and ADS spread is going to be uh, half of what it would be without the vertical foregrip. So this could actually be a great attachment. Now what's cooler about the vertical foregrip is that it's not going to mess with your spread if you're standing still. In Battlefield 3, it would reduce your recoil but increase your aiming down sight spread, which people were kind of arguing about for a long time. It really didn't make any sense because the foregrip wouldn't really do that in real life. So it was just some sort of way to balance it out. But now uh, the vertical grip is giving you a lot of abilities that really make sense with the weapon. It allows you to handle the weapon much more solidly, which makes sense for moving around. You should be able to maintain your target much better while on the move. So I can't wait to see how this is going to play out in game. It could be a great attachment for people who like to run and gun a lot. Uh, PDWs, a lot of the um, SMGs, whatever you're using out there for the engineer, you could see this as being a very, very popular attachment. There doesn't seem to be any statistical difference between the red or green laser sight, at least according to the forums. Uh, I was hoping that there might be some sort of minute difference between them, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be that way. For the most part, the other attachments seem like they're going to function very similarly to the ones in Battlefield 3. Uh, I'm most excited about those new grips and testing those out and seeing how they're going to work in-game. I think the biggest change here, if any of this damage model does go through, and again, it could be all completely different, is the maximum 20 damage on most of the assault rifles and carbines in the game. Now, in Bad Company 2, they had a modifier called Magnum Ammo, which would boost your regular damage output, and this would make it much closer to the Battlefield 3 damage model. So, uh, it remains to be seen if they're going to have something like Magnum Ammo for Battlefield 4, or maybe they'll just bring the weapon stats back up to where they were in Battlefield 3. Honestly, I love the weapon damage model in BF3. I'm hoping they can keep it similar to that, because if we're doing 25 damage, 20 damage maximum, it's going to take longer to drop every opponent. Uh, you're not going to be able to kill quite as many people with one magazine. Um, and I just, I think they found the sweet spot in BF3 and I want them to continue using that sweet spot. So that wraps it up for this video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this new potential damage model. Uh, if you think 20 damage would be a good way to go or if you think it would be really detrimental to the gameplay. I'm going to have both the forum post and the uh, minimum and maximum system requirement post uh, linked in the video description if you guys want to check that out on your own. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.